So I quite recently just finished reading Classroom Delete Volume 0. I'm sorry if it took a while, but this is mainly due to the fact that translations were not that easy to get. And even the people who were translating this volume have come out and said that this was probably one of the hardest volumes to translate in English. Unless you know how to speak Japanese, because like many people pointed out, was that this wasn't like a digital release. Like there was only physical copies of this. And plus, you actually had to buy the DVD set of Classroom Delete Season 2 because as you all know, Season 2 happened. And of course, they were going to sell dvd sets of the series and if you happen to buy the dvd set you will also get a physical copy of volume zero of classroom the elite so because of this a lot of people were excited for these dvd sets to come out because they might get a chance to read this volume and also the fact that this was a limited supply basically saying that it's first come first serve as as of right now based on what i've seen on the information that even the most recent dvd sets don't have this volume anymore so yeah that's the reason why it took a while for me to finish this volume was because most likely this was very hard to get and very hard to translate as once again this is only a physical copy release there was no digital release so with that out of the way let's just talk about volume zero and what i thought about it now this volume is mostly about ayana koji's past as well as the origins of the white room but also we get to learn more about ayana koji's father and after reading this volume i can safely say that ayana koji's father is probably one of the worst human beings of all time like the way this guy thinks and his emotions towards other people is very clear that he just isn't a great person and is very clearly shown in this volume and after reading this volume it just makes me feel really bad for ayana koji i know many people like to label ayana koji as like this psychopath manipulator who has no emotions no heart whatsoever but if you think about it it's not like he wanted to be this type of person had he not been in the white room most likely ayana koji would have been a different person but because he spent his entire life in the white room and he had to learn many different things in the white room this shaped him out to be the person he is now now before we talk about ayana koji's past and talk about more about his experience in the white room let's take a few steps back and talk about ayana koji's father and the origins of the white room first now in previous classroom the elite volumes we have learned a little bit things about ayana koji's father in which we find out that ayana koji's father's past isn't great he had a very troubling upbringing like he did not have a lot of things in life that was really good he wasn't smart he didn't have a lot of money basically he was just at rock bottom but because of that ayana koji's father got new determination willing to do what Whatever it takes in order to get power in order to be able to move on in life because he states that people who have power are more successful in life and because of that he decided to join the political world in which he wanted to be a politician however the political world wasn't easy as he will later find out is that a lot of people in the political world will also do anything to get power they want to get re-elected they want to have more alliances that's the kind of people that are in the political world and after a while he will eventually meet Naoe, somebody who was really good at the political game and knew how the political world works. This was somebody that Ayana Koji's father looked up to and it was somebody that he was willing to do whatever in order to satisfy him. And this is where the origins of the White Room began because as it turns out it was actually Naoe who came up with the White Room project because this would benefit him in the elections that were going to happen in the near future. And after seeing that Ayana Koji's father is a very trustworthy person and was very loyal to him, he decided to hand this project to him to see what would he do with this project. But just because Naoi handed him this project, it didn't mean that he was going to fully support him as he stated with Ayana Koji's father is that from now on, he was going to take care of this project all on his own. Which basically means that he's going to have to come up with a way to get the money, the funding, and the negotiations in order to make this project happen. But if there's something that we learn about Ayana Koji's father is that whenever he's determined to do something, he is going to do it. So of course he was going to take this project very seriously however that being the case we have to remind ourselves that this is ayana koji's father that we're talking about and of course because he wanted this project to be a success he was willing to do anything in order to make sure that this project was successful like for example in order to get the researchers and the people who are going to take care of the children in the white room he was going to have to get people who were willing to get their hands dirty and people who did not have very clean records as well as for how he was going to get the children to be in the white room he did have a few ideas like for example he did come up with the legal ways to get children and that is by getting children that were either abandoned or the other way was by simply letting the parents know that they were interested in the child and thus they will make the parents sign a contract and give them of course money in order for them to have their child however this didn't stop ayana koji's father from doing very illegal things as well like for example as he reveals in this volume is the fact that he actually did get kids from the black market so more proof to show us just how much of a garbage human being this guy is but anyways because he did all this he managed to then find create the white room and this is the part where we find out about ayana koji's past what his life was like in the white room and how he even got in the white room in the first place because as it turns out ayana koji's father wanted a kid not because he wanted a child of his own and take care of it no it's because he just wanted him to be sent in the white room so more proof once again that this guy is garbage but anyways 
So he manages to get a woman that goes by the name of Mika to have his kid. Obviously, you know where this is going. Obviously, he made sure that this woman got pregnant. And this is where we learn about Ayana Koji's mother. And we find out that she's also a very bad parent. And this is because, as it turns out, she also has done a lot of shady things as well. Just like Ayana Koji's father. And the fact that she was willing to do all this just for money goes to show what her priorities are and what she's willing to do in order to get a huge sum of money. And to make things worse, we find out why Ayana Koji koji's name is kiyotaka and it's the fact that it was actually the name his mother gave him and this name belongs to the man that she was going out with and she was planning on running away with with the money so yeah once again not great parents ayana koji has probably one of the worst parents ever now going back to ayana koji's experience in the white room it's as bad as you can imagine pretty much ayana koji had to learn a lot of things in a, such a young age basically all the things that you had to learn as you were growing up he had to learn it in a very short amount of time because if you don't produce results you become a dropout and that is something that he did not want to happen because he didn't know what was going to happen to him once he was dropped out of the white room so he did everything he can in order to produce results and the life of a person Person in the white room isn't great because they are on a tight schedule every day you just simply wake up they get ready they start doing tests they start learning new things and this happens all day until they go to sleep that's the schedule of the white room not a great place to be at especially if you're a child but sadly this was something that ayana koji did every day this was pretty much his entire life for pretty much his entire childhood but if there was something interesting that was going on in the white room it would be the introduction to two characters that are really interesting in this volume and this is just a great example as to what happens when you are able to create interesting characters and these characters are yuki and shiro yuki and shiro were also white room students who were also the same generation as ayana koji and there's a lot of interesting things about these two characters separately yuki was a person who actually did show emotions and this was something that was always something that interested ayana koji because he did not know how human emotions function because this was not something that he was taught in the white room as it was seemed unnecessary to teach the kids in the white room which as a result led him to not really see how human emotions function and how they actually work at all. But Yuki was the exception as she did express emotions which was something that Ayana Koji never really understood as to how she was able to make these emotions. Even when he asked her she did not know the answer as she just states that it's just something that she usually does. And there was even one point in time in which Ayana Koji tried to smile but he couldn't because he did not know how to smile at all. However just because Yuki was this nice person who did show emotions that didn't mean that she was treated differently in the white room as she was also treated the same way as Ayana Koji and the others and during the time when they were already rising in the ranks and it was very clear that people were dropping left and right the test started getting more harder and it was very clear that not all the kids were going to make it and Yuki was one of them because one day when she did not pass a test she was instantly labeled as a dropout and would be disqualified from Ayana Koji's group and just seeing her desperation and trying to convince them that she was actually trying her best and that she was willing to do another test in order to show them that she's actually good it just goes to show us what these kids are going through the fact that they have to produce results in order to stay in the white room or else who knows what happens to them when they drop out is a very scary thing and obviously for a child it's something that they don't want to happen because they are scared as to what's to happen when they drop out and it was at this point where she even tried clinging to ayana koji asking for help but unsurprisingly ayana koji did not help her not because he did not know how to but because he didn't want to showing us that once again at a very young age ayana koji was a very cold person who did not help any Body unless it benefited him but surprisingly towards the end ayana koji did try to help her out a little bit and that is because as she was being forced to leave ayana koji told one of the instructors that the reason why she wasn't able to pass a test was because she was not feeling well but despite trying to help her out in the end it didn't really work because even the next day she never really came back and just that was that with yuki now shiro on the other hand was actually considered one of the best people to come out in the generation of ayana koji he was pretty much like the second place of ayana koji as again Koji was in the top we find out that this Shiro person actually did not want to be in the white room he actually wanted freedom during a lesson and fighting in which Ayana Koji was facing against him as there was no instructors in the room this is where Shiro took the chance to talk to Ayana Koji saying to him that he actually was planning on leaving in the white room and for Ayana Koji this was surprising because he did not expect him to say that when Ayana Koji asks why Shiro just comes out and says that he wants to see the real world he doesn't want to be in the white room any longer as the white room isn't freedom he wants to 
to be free and see what the real world is like. Which surprised Ayana Koji because he found it hard to believe that someone was willing to drop out just for that. As remember, he didn't want to drop out because like I said earlier, Ayana Koji doesn't know what's going to happen to him after he drops out of the white room. However, Shiro is a different case where he actually does want to drop out of the white room and the reason is because he wants to see the real world. And while Ayana Koji finds this not really great, he doesn't really mind it if this is Shiro's decision. And during their fight, after Shiro tries to take down Ayana Koji, it's very clear that Ayana Koji is in the top. But Shiro doesn't really seem to mind it as he's glad that he's been eliminated as he can finally be free. And with that, they both say their final goodbyes. I think what really makes this interesting is the fact that I really do want to see Shiro once again because I really want to know what he's been up to now that he left the white room. Because after that, there's no mention of Shiro ever again and what happened to him after he left the white room. So I do hope that in the near future, I don't know how, but I hope in the near future, Ayana Koji and Shiro have another conversation in which now they're all grown up. They're basically teenagers. It will be interesting to see what their conversation is going to be about if they meet each other ever again and how would they react once they see each other because they obviously do know what they look like. So yeah, I'll be really interested if this happens, but we'll just have to wait and see if this even happens at all. So with that away, let's continue with volume zero. And then let's talk about what the twist is in this volume because it's very hilarious because if you think about it, it's kind of well deserved. And this is Ayana Koji's father realizing that Naoe, you know, the guy that he's been looking up to for a really long time, the guy that he's very loyal to and does whatever he says. Yeah, well, as it turns out, Naoe pretty much cut ties with him completely because as a result, the White Room project was no longer needed because as it turns out, he was not going to be involved in the Japanese elections. So basically what this means is that not only did Ayana Koji's father wasted his time, but he also spent so many years on this white room project only for it to just pretty much be labeled as something that was completely unnecessary now which i find it really hilarious i remember this part happening i was just laughing because this is for the first time seeing Ayana Koji's father shocked and surprised that this happened to him because I have no sympathy of this person because of all the things he's done with this white room and all the things he had to do in order for this white room to happen. So yeah, the fact that he was pretty much used by someone else is hilarious. So yeah, I just wanted to throw this out there because it's probably one of the funniest moments in this volume, the fact that Ayana Koji's father was used like that. But sadly, this didn't last for too long because unfortunately, Ayana Koji's father managed to find a way to keep the white room running and yeah sadly this only lasted for a short time because after that he just became even more powerful he still somehow managed to still get connections and still get the funds to keep the white room running and this is clearly shown during the party that he hosted of the people who were funding this white room and this is where we go back to the moments that happened in volume 8 of second year because remember that whole thing Kanzaki was talking about how he actually met Ayana Koji's father in the party yeah this was the party that he was talking about this was the party that Kanzaki met Ayana Koji's father Father. So basically what this means as well is that Kanzaki's parents were actually funding the White Room project. So um, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I don't have no issues with Kanzaki as a character, but his parents, on the other hand, it's a different story. And this is where we also get to meet Ishigami. Now, in my year two volume eight video, I mentioned how Ishigami was the White Room student. Well, I just want to correct that and say that no, that's not the case. Apparently, he wasn't from the White Room as this volume confirms that he comes from a very wealthy family as as well and there are also people who fund this white room project so yeah Ishigami is not the third white room student that I initially said in that video and now I'm curious to who it is because if it's not Ishigami then it's clearly somebody else so just wanted to throw that out there because that's what I thought at first I thought Ishigami was the third white room student but based on this volume it's not that's not the case so the third white room student is still out there in classroom delete so Hopefully in the near future volumes we find out who that is because I am really now interested as to who the third white room student is. So yeah, we see more Ishigami in this volume and based on what I've seen from Ishigami, he's a very confident individual and I'm really curious where he gets his confidence from because he is really confident. Like he has a lot of things up his sleeves in this volume, basically with what happened during the whole party, which I'm not going to get into detail because it's really long, but just know that Ishigami really came out as a very confident in person and I can understand now why Kanzaki's not a huge fan of him and he's keeping an eye on him because it's very clear that he has a lot of things going on in his mind and has a lot of tricks up his sleeve and another thing that was also unexpected about this whole 
event is the fact that we learn more things about Ichika. That's right, I was not expecting to learn more things about Ichika's life, but here we are. As it turns out, her parents are bad. No surprising because it seems like every parent in Classroom of the Elite is just terrible. Now that I think about it, the only parent that's actually good or decent at best is Sakinagi's dad, which is really shocking. That just goes to show you how many bad parents there are in this series. But anyway, back to the topic. So we find out that Ichika's father actually sent his own daughter to the white room as soon as she was born. Now that's already bad enough but here's where things get worse. As it turns out Ichika's father is also cheating on his wife with another woman that apparently is from Hawaii and as it turns out that woman became pregnant and during this party this guy talks to Ayana Koji's father as to wanting him to have that kid in the white room. I swear this guy is treating the white room like his own personal daycare or something because the fact that he's willing to just put them in in that place it shows that he only cares about himself and what happens to him not the children so yeah now we know how Ishka managed to be in the white room and that is because her father sucks and we also know now that she has a sibling that's also in the white room I'm interested if they're ever going to talk about this in future novels in which they're going to bring up Ichika's sibling and who knows if we'll actually get to see her but we'll just have to wait and see what happens next and then the last parts of this volume are just really insane so towards the end we then get a scene in which I gotta Koji actually talks to Yuki once again that's right Yuki's alive she's not like dead or anything she's actually alive but as a result of her being in the white room she now has PTSD as even just mentioning the name white room it completely scares her and she starts to breathe very heavily but now that she is free she now wants to talk to Ayana Koji once again because that's what she requested to talk to Ayana Koji however it's very clear from this scene that Ayana Koji has no interest in her and it's very clear that he doesn't see anything meaningful in this conversation and it's very quick to end this conversation off no matter how many times Yuki pleaded him to stay and continue talking to her he had no interest in this conversation and so decided to just leave once again telling her that she should just focus on her treatment and getting the help she needs which was very sad to see because it's very clear that Yuki did care about Ayana Koji. It's very clear that she has something with Ayana Koji. Now, I don't know if it's like love or maybe she just like really enjoyed talking to him. But just seeing how Ayana Koji had no interest in her whatsoever was very sad to see as it was very clear that Yuki was truly wanting to talk to Ayana Koji about many different things. But sadly, Ayana Koji had no interest because he once again did not see anything that would benefit him whatsoever. Now, you may be thinking that I'm going to call Ayana Koji a heartless monster after this scene, but that's not the case case because the next thing is where really it starts to become more speculation and more as me trying to figure out what's going to happen as the series goes on and this was during the car scene between Ayana Koji and his father as Ayana Koji was looking at the window Ayana Koji's father asked him what he thinks of the outside world to which Ayana Koji responds by saying nothing to which his father didn't really seem to be surprised however Ayana Koji's mind was saying something completely different because he said how it was great that his father thinks that he's under control and thinks that he doesn't have any emotions whatsoever because at the the end of the day that's what he wants him to think. Ayana Koji explains how the more he thinks he's under control the more his fangs are growing showing us that maybe in the near future we're going to get the realization that Ayana Koji was maybe plotting our revenge his entire time. I mean if you think about it what else is there a reason to say that? There's no reason to say that other than you wanting revenge and this could imply that maybe this entire time Ayana Koji did have emotions it's just that they were deep inside him he just didn't want to express them because as something that many of the researchers who were in the white room said is that Ayana Koji is good at pretending to be someone that he's not. So maybe what if this entire time he was just playing a character of him not having any emotions whatsoever? What if all this time he did have emotions it's just that he didn't want to express them in order to not raise suspicions? That's the kind of person that maybe Ayana Koji was trying to be in order to fool the people around him that were watching him thinking that they had him under control when that was far from the case. That is one thing that makes Ayana Koji so scary is that you should not underestimate him whatsoever as it's very clear that he's a very unpredictable person and after seeing this part I look back at the scene with Yuki and I think to myself what if Ayana Koji did not want to talk to her because this was just a coping mechanism for him not to remember all the things that happened to him in the white room what if Ayana Koji wanted revenge at his father because of all the things he had to deal with in the white room after him having years and upon years of his entire childhood just being in the white room what if now Ayana Koji wanted to now finally get back at his dad for doing 
doing all that to him what if maybe just maybe he's doing all this for the kids who were in the white room as well maybe after seeing yuki he didn't want to talk to her not because he didn't want to but because he just couldn't bear it he couldn't bear seeing what happened to a person after they were in the white room so now now that he's free maybe he's plotting his revenge against his father that is just speculation and i know some people are going to say that's not possible but you really don't know what i got koji like he's a very unpredictable person you can't really know what he's up to and some of the things he oftentimes says you don't know if he's telling the truth or not which is something that you should always think about when talking about ayana koji is he being honest is he not being honest when is he serious when is he not when is he pretending to be something he's not those are the kind of questions you always ask yourself whenever ayana koji is talking whenever he does a certain action so after this moment it just got me thinking what if this entire series is just about protagonist slowly slowly plotting his revenge against his father after everything he had to deal with in the white room after years of pain and suffering while he may not show it it's very clear that ayana koji was heavily affected by this white room so now that he's free maybe now he has a chance to finally take down his father once and for all because remember Remember, Ayana Koji's father is a guy who has no remorse for other people. He doesn't care what happens to other people as long as it doesn't affect him. If it benefits him, then that's great for him. That is the kind of person Ayana Koji's father is. And something that I forgot to mention was that there was even a point in time in which when he was talking with Sakinagi's dad, he told him that if he wants to, he could put his daughter in the white room, which of course he strongly rejected as he wanted to spend time with his daughter. That's the kind of person Ayana Koji's dad is. He's a person who just treats other people like just just tools and just guinea pigs to be experimented on that's probably most likely why Yanakoji thinks the way he thinks is because of his father's influence and now I'm even more curious as to how this series is going to end what's going to happen towards the finale of Classroom DLE and what is Ayana Koji's actual plan we'll just have to wait and see as the series continues and with that that's pretty much the entire video hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time